Hello Highline Elementary! Today's video will address our fourth grade students and some tips and resources for teaching research skills. The Common Core Standards address research in the writing section. It says, conduct short research projects that build knowledge through investigation of different aspects of a topic. With the internet, students have access to a wealth of information, but how do we guide our students to find accurate and relevant information that's appropriate for their age group? First, we have to have the conversation with students that there is a lot of false information and unreliable information on the internet and that not every site is dependable. This message might stick a little more if you create a fake Wikipedia page for yourself or a fake Google site. You could add funny, ridiculous facts which would grab the kids' interest, but more to the point, it would show them just how easy it is to put fake information out there. Once you've developed an awareness to be cautious of fake information, you can start to teach and model how to refine your search to find relevant information. Here are a few tips and questions. At this age, it's important to talk to students about choosing keywords and phrases to reduce the number of sites that come up and to hone in on the specific information being searched for. One of the best tips for this is to ask the student, what are you wanting to know about blank, whatever topic it is. From there, guide them to ask specific questions or type in specific keywords in their search engine. Take some class time to model searching for information using different keywords. This is a great time to teach the students categorizing information, which is an informational writing standard. For example, let's say they want to write an informational essay about an animal. You let them do an initial search at first and they find an overwhelming amount of information. From there, you can guide the class to think of what types of categories or subtopics you could write about to focus their searches. For example, predators or praise, what the animal looks like, special features, a diet. From there, the students can create questions to focus their search. Much of the information online is for adults, adults or higher readers than fourth grade level. So another tip is to have students add the phrase, quote unquote, for kids in their search. This will not only reduce the number of hits, but also adds an additional assurance that the site will be more appropriate and the content will be more kid friendly. Here's another tip that we educators may forget. Model and teach persistence in research. Today's youth has so much information and communication at their fingertips that they have become accustomed to instant gratification. So when researching, if they don't find a simple answer to a question or fact within a few minutes, they may get frustrated or give up. I'm sure you guys have seen this happen before. Model and teach your students how to persevere to find the wanted information. Teach them to reword their, re their search question or keywords and to look through more than the first five sites that appear. The next issue is a complex topic and difficult to teach at this age level. How do we ensure that students are using sites that are credible and accurate? Kathy Schrock has a list of five W's questions that students can ask, this, ask themselves as they are checking for a website and their credibility. This list, however, may be a little overwhelming for our fourth graders, so I have chosen one question from each section. The questions are, who wrote this page? And I'll add on to that, is the website associated with a name I know, like PBS Kids? Next is, what information is included? When was the site last updated? I feel this is an easy question for the students to find the answer to. The next one is, where is the information from? And last and important, why is this page better than others? So another resource that may help with spending too much time in internet searches that may yield little results is to use a site called ThingLink. In this site, the teacher can gather hyperlinks to sites that he or she, the teacher, has already deemed reliable, credible, and relevant. The hyperlinks are then posted on an image that represents the topic. There are few advantages to this method. The content is controlled and consistent and safe, but another advantage is for the differentiation purposes. At Highline, only 30% of our fourth graders are reading proficiently. 
This means that much of the content on the internet is not accessible for our struggling readers. The advantage of ThingLink is the teacher can find sites that have videos that are embedded and not YouTube, since our elementary students don't have access to YouTube, and the resources that have audio. When it comes to copyright laws in education, there are some differences if the content is being used for nonprofit educational purposes. Students should always cite their sources when they are using information specific to that source and if they use any image or content from a site. They can cite the sources with the author's name, the date, and a quote-unquote retrieved from phrase. For more in-depth lessons and how to teach and guide students to find relevant and accurate information, please visit the Common Sense Education site. Click Educators, then Scope and Sequence, and choose 3 through 5, and then scroll through the lessons and download the PDFs. You may also want to look at Scholastic.com for lessons in online research. Another resource uh, for research skills that has well laid out lesson plans is the Global Dig Digital Citizen Foundation. They have beginner, intermediate, and advanced lessons. Please see the reference page for the links to these resources. Following these guidelines will help teach students to be better digital citizens. They will be more cognizant of irrelevant, irrelevant and unreliable resources and be more conscious to give credit to their sources.